if you come to expect action, well, you're not going to get it. In this video essay, I will talk you through the art of slow cinema, and I will suggest that slow movies can offer much more than a mere experience of boredom. The term slow cinema does not refer to an art movement or the use of slow motion and slow movements in movies. It however refers to a series of stylistic choices that can be made by the director to create a specific cinematic experience, one that is characterized by takes that are not dictated by any deadline or rush. According to the French film critic Michel Simon, slow cinema is a response to fast-paced Hollywood movies. Today's cinema hugely relies on the use of intense and overwhelming images to inform the audience about what is happening. And to Simant, several directors reacted to the bombardment of sound and image typical of Hollywood cinema by creating a cinema of contemplation that invites the spectator to take his time to look at the movie. In this scene from the movie Jean de Man, Van Trois, Quai du Commerce, Dix Quatre-Vingt, Bruxelles, there appears to be no dramatic tension and the audience is called to watch the main character, Jean Dilman, peel potatoes for about 2 minutes and 30 seconds. We are forced to participate in this moment of ordinary life by making sure that our focus dedicates exclusively to an undramatic action. Slow cinema sheds a light on the small gestures that characterize the human condition. This can lead the spectator to experience a range of emotions that can vary from boredom to anxiety, or even relaxation. In the movie Cemetery of Splendor, for example, the director uses soft lights, a low ambient soundtrack, and slow rhythm to physically relax the spectator. But how are directors able to create such a cinematic experience? The answer is, through the use of long takes and lack of narrative mainly, this scene from Umberto D by Vittorio De Sica is an example of a static long take. A long take is a shot that lasts much longer than the standard editing pace of movies at large. Furthermore, no cuts can be recorded in this scene and the camera is fixed in the same position the whole time. Not all movies characterized by a great presence of long takes however can be classified as slow movies. For instance, Birdman appears to be filmed in an extremely long take. Here we can see Birdman following and talking to Regan Thompson. A lot happens in this scene. First of all, it is not a static take that displays a moment of ordinary life. On the contrary, the camera follows the action. The scene is not calm and quiet, but most importantly, it does not call for contemplation and interpretation of what is unfolding in front of the audience. It is quite a self-explanatory scene indeed. In slow movies, the narrative, along with the dialogues, is almost non-present. Just like in this scene where Maria tries to light up the gas stove. In this case, we are basically presented with a dead time. Dead times are events in which no significant action is recorded. According to the French critic Bazin, it is thanks to the freedom from the action image that it is possible to obtain a pure optical experience. Through the use of these features, that is long takes and lack of narrative, it is possible then to achieve a contemplative effect on the spectator. In the movie A Ghost Story by David Lowry, M loses her husband C in a car accident. Here we can see M quietly eating a cake while sitting on the floor. The scene lasts about 4 minutes and a half. As a result of the long take, we start becoming aware of the passing of time of the character's surroundings, our eyes start wandering, we are given the free choice to decide what and who to look at. This is when we notice a ghostly presence standing still in the background. The audience is then led to contemplate the scene. The director allows the audience to fill in the dead time, to create its personal and subjective interpretation of what is going on in front of its eyes. This allows the spectator to reflect and to be introspective in a way that can be perhaps boring, but also deeply personal. And this is why I like slow cinema. It breaks the stereotypes of cinema perpetrated by 21st century Hollywood movies to offer a pure intellectual and mental exercise. The viewer is indeed called to attend a private and intimate cinematic experience that he is free to interpret as he wants according to his subjectivity.
all in all, slow cinema can be more than just long, boring takes. It is a unique form of art that has the power to highly affect the spectator's emotions.